Hello everyone. Welcome to the Maitri podcast Between Friends Conversations with Maitri. I am your host Nandini Ray and today we are presenting this episode to commemorate and celebrate LGBTQ Pride Month. Listeners, many of you know that we started our podcast in January this year and since then we have published 18 episodes and this is the 19th one. In our podcast episodes we discuss topics that matter to our community and are related to Matthew's work. And generally we focus on one issue as our prime discussion topic. but we touch many issues that are connected with that prime discussion topic in this way we have touched lgbtq plus issues in our various episodes but today this is the first time we are making this our prime discussion topic so i'm very excited to do this episode and i believe this discussion will give all of us an opportunity to embrace our differences and unite our voices Today we have invited three South Asian college students who have identified themselves as members of LGBTQ+ community. They are Sati, Ravina and Arin and they are interested to have an open discussion on this subject. Thank you so much Sati, Ravina and Arin for coming to our show. I can't wait to get deep into conversation with you. Before we start our conversation would you please introduce yourselves to our listeners My name is Ravina my pronouns are they them and I'm a student at UC Berkeley I'm also transgender too and my major is in mathematics but I'm also interested in stuff like this I've been part of a lot of queer activities on campus LGBTQ activities on campus I'm just happy to be here and like educate people who listen into my story more. Thank you. I'm Oren Roy. I use they them or he him pronouns. And I'm also a student at UC Berkeley. Um I'm a fourth year and I'm studying public health and I'm minoring in, in gender and women studies. I'm also trans. I identify as trans masculine and gay. I'm really passionate about healthcare justice and community health. especially issues that affect queer and trans or queer communities of color. I moved to the Bay Area about 3 years ago from the East Coast and since then I have kind of been involved with queer trans and uh, student of color activities at Berkeley. I've also been a youth aide and a community health volunteer and I'm really excited for this podcast and I'm looking forward to having this conversation. Wow, thank you so much. Hi, I'm Sachi Takcham. I use they she pronouns and identify as queer and as gender queer. And my mom is from various places around India like Trivandrum, Bangalore, and UP. And my dad is from Manipur, but I was born and raised in the Bay Area and I am now about to go into my third year of undergrad at UC Berkeley as well, where I'm studying environmental justice and food systems reform. that's me great great you know what we are doing this uh, episode as we want to build understanding and respect toward lgbtq people in our community you may have noticed that for some south asians lgbtq plus issues are taboo topic they are very uncomfortable discussing anything around this topic uh, it's possible that they don't have enough information or knowledge on this subject and they need more education and some community members want to be a better ally to lesbian gay bi and trans people but they are not sure uh, where to start So I believe this uh, show will be a good start to bring the conversation to the forefront. So let's see if we can start with some basic information like what does LGBTQ stand for? Why is June commemorated as Pride Month? LGBTQ stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and queer. And the reason that June is commemorated as Pride Month is because 50 years ago or 1969 on actually this week of June there were a bunch of riots in New York called the Stonewall riots it used to be a bar for gay and transgender people to hang out but i think it was on the 28th of June that police raided the bar and 
a lot of gay people were arrested on that night. And for the next five to six days, there was continuous rioting against the police so that gay and transgender people would be left alone and they'd be able to have their place. Uh, we talk about community. So have their place of community, which were the bars, and they were fighting to not be arrested by the police. I'm here. I'm sharing my vulnerability with you. I am here to learn, to learn about LGBTQ issues. I am here to learn the pain they go through. And maybe I have limited knowledge about these issues. So I'm sure that we will be doing more shows for our community members to, to learn. But this is the first start. So I'm very excited. And I just want to make sure one in a bottom line, what, what you described that LGBTQ stand for lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans and queer. So is the bottom line, will that be right to assume that LGBTQ plus community, one individual, if that person is coming from LGBTQ plus community, that person is non-heterosexual or uh, non-cisgender, right? Yeah. That is yeah. the main thing. Basically. Okay. So that's the basic thing. Okay. And people can learn about what is lesbian, what is gay. So everything they can learn by reading, right? Yes. Reading on different. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think many community members uh, shape their views about LGBTQ individuals based on negative ideas. And those ideas are often rooted in myths, stereotypes, and misinformation. Like, homosexuality is a choice or homosexuality can be cured, etc. So many parents are still wrestling with how to support their child when their own value system is so challenged. Uh, I was reading a blog where one mom wrote that I still think I must have done something wrong. Perhaps it would have made a difference if I had painted her room pink or had her watch more Disney princes. So I'm thinking that so many myths, so many misunderstandings are floating around. So do you want to discuss any such myths or even myths about LGBTQ relationships? Yeah, I can talk about this one. Um, I think one popular myth in especially communities of color and in South Asian communities specifically is that being queer or trans is a white thing or a European thing. But actually, if you look through many South Asian histories, queerness or being trans or being gay is really part of our history as South Asian people. So it's not as unfamiliar or as scary or as unnatural as it might initially seem. Those are just kind of ideas that have been perpetuated uh, because of colonialism. So yeah, I think that that myth that it's like an unnatural or white thing isn't really true. And there are a lot of queer South Asian people and also people of color in general. And I guess in terms of relationships specifically, I think that besides, like you mentioned, besides the kind of idea that queer relationships are abnormal or weird, um, I think that there's also in the U.S. specifically um, people who either like stigmatize queer relationships or even like fetishize queer relationships so going the opposite direction where it might seem like it's a good thing or it might seem that someone's being an ally but they're actually just fetishizing queer relationships instead or seeing it as like a cute thing that is also harmful because it kind of perpetuates the idea that we're an other or not really people in the same way i feel like this is my personal opinion Sometimes, like, I've heard and I've seen accounts of, like, straight people thinking that, like, LGBTQ relationships are, like, better and they're, you know, totally safe and that, like, violence couldn't happen. But that's not true. Yeah. Queer people are human, just like everyone else. And we have a lot to heal from, I think. And what could help in maintaining better relationships is, like, a play, like, a support place to go to if a queer person is, like, hurting in their relationship. They don't know how to talk about it. They've never been taught to talk about it. Right? They have a lot of this internalized hatred. So having like a support place, external thing, where maybe they can both talk to people and understand and unlearn things, like that's, you know, one way that queer relationships could be improved. But that support system has to be there in the first place. So I think a lot of the problems is like not having that in the first place anyway. 
Mm. And one common misconception I have heard that when two women are in intimate partner relationship, because they are women, they cannot hurt each other. There cannot be any uh, violence or abuse in relationship. That's totally, for me, that's a myth, right? What do you think? That's completely a myth. I have friends who are like either lesbians or bisexual who have been in abusive or even unhealthy relationships with other women. So that's definitely a myth. And I also think that one other kind of related myth is that people think that butch or more masculine partners are always the perpetrators of violence in in like lesbian or in relationships where women have with other women. But that's also not true. Someone the if one partner is more masculine, that doesn't automatically make them more aggressive or like the perpetrator of violence. Since we are talking about uh, abuse and violence in relationship, in queer community, when someone is suffering violence or abuse in their intimate partner relationship, it is also possible that they are simultaneously suffering abuse or discrimination by their family members, community, um, and or system. So do you agree on what kind of discrimination or oppression they may face from their own family or community? Yeah, I think that there is a lot of like overlap between where people are being exposed to violence. And I think that a lot of people definitely do also face discrimination or abuse from their families. Because like we were talking about before, it's not something that people always understand or families always understand. I know in my own experiences, I've been pretty lucky in that um, my family does kind of generally understand where I'm coming from because they kind of grew up in a place where they were exposed to different kinds of people. But I do know that in the town where my parents live, which is a predominantly South Asian and East Asian immigrant community, a lot of times people don't really understand me or understand the way that I present myself. And I definitely do stick out. So that kind of feeling of being excluded or kind of an outsider in my own communities is a pretty challenging feeling and especially comes into play when I try to connect more with my culture and try to be part of either holidays or celebrations. There is that barrier that comes up between me and me trying to connect with my culture as well. Yeah, I definitely feel that. I think until recently mainstream queer representation had been devoid of like QTPOC people and just people other than cis white gay men or lesbians or bisexual people. So growing up, it felt like I had, I was either South Asian or I was queer. It never occurred to me that I could be both. Like I was either watching cishet Bollywood movies or I was like watching very whitewashed glee queer media. There was no space really for me to be both or to do both. Yeah, I definitely feel that like that disconnect from I have to either be queer in one space or I have to be South Asian in one space. And it's been a bit intimidating to try to do both at the same time in most spaces that I go to. For me personally, I haven't been in a long-term or short-term relationship, but definitely, at least for me, trying to like navigate school and like mental health and stuff and not seeing like resources for me there um, because it's, you know, usually dominated by white people. And then trying to talk to like, family, friends, or family about what's going on, and I can't do that either. So I can't talk to these. Those two supports are really lacking. And I think the ways that families can discriminate or feel different ways, those thoughts can, like, kind of flood out into, like, the community. So oftentimes, like, friends of the same ethnicity might be hard to talk to. We might be straight and cisgender. So it can seem that, like, from a lot of sides, it's hard to find support. So So have you, all three of you, have you ever seen any of your friends from LGBTQ community has suffered a lot, like, discrimination, oppression from family members 
that has had a detrimental effect on that person? I myself have, and I know other people who have. And I think one of the reasons it could be that is because, you know, we're not mainstream. So our, our culture and like, that's one of the heaviest things we hold on to. So it sometimes feels like your culture is kind of throwing you out. And that's really heavy if you're not white, mm. like especially in the U.S. But then the added difficulty is that when you try to find help in trying to deal with like all the systems that you're trying to navigate, it's like very hard. It's, it's hard to find that help. So it's hard for you to navigate the systems. And then when you try to look for mental health, that's hard too. So it's mm. a big strain. It's a big strain when both those things aren't there. So that's what can be detrimental, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think then the added part of family rejection or cultural rejection adds another thing. So that's another layer on top of like all the other mental health things you're dealing with. And then all the concrete things that you can't do because of you know, how the system makes it seem. So it representation, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I think it could be very detrimental. Yeah, and... For me personally, I think that if anybody face family rejection, that is huge. That is the most painful part. I mean, uh, society, community, systems, I understand. But if someone is getting support from their own families, then that can give anyone strength to move on, right? So family rejection is a big thing. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people and for a lot of my friends I see having to choose between themselves and living like their truth, you know, living who, the life that they want to live and having to live that life without their family, having to choose between their family and the life that they want to live. And obviously that's going to take a tremendous toll on your health, on your sense of worth and well-being. I do see that in our community, unfortunately, and it's it's a horrible choice that people have to make and it, or that people are making and one that they don't have to make they shouldn't have to make that choice if we can influence any way or educate any way from uh, our community members and they can understand that that even if your children are lgbtq individual if they can provide support if they can provide unconditional love that can bring a huge positive impact on that child right i hope our discussion will help some people to see things differently to think about their own biases. And people around the world face violence and inequality and sometimes torture, even execution, because of who they are, how they look, and who they love. So it is necessary to address uh, those inequalities um, in human relationships. And it is important to come together in support and stand up for what we believe in. Like at Maitri, we envision a society where all relationships are built on dignity, equity, and compassion. So I'm glad that we are doing this show where we are having this important conversation. And I hope that uh, we will be able to help at least a handful of people to see things differently, to see if they are biased against anything they are they are providing enough support and love uh, to their children who are identifying themselves as lgbtq individuals so what are some of the resources that people can get help for their loved ones or themselves do you want to share any resources i know this one organization in the bay area i'm assuming my three listeners are mostly from the bay area so there's one organization called Tricon which is a South Asian LGBTQ plus Bay Area organization based in San Francisco. They started, I think, in the 80s. So they've been around for a long time and they have support groups for women identifying queer people and training sessions for parents of queer youth. They do a lot of general community work for the trans community, the South Asian queer community. I haven't worked with them closely personally, but I do see them showing up and doing a lot of community work for queer South Asians. In addition to Tukon that Sachi mentioned, also in the Bay, 
There is the Pacific Center on Telegraph, like right between Berkeley and Oakland. They aren't South Asian specific, but they are queer specific and they're a, like a mental health resource center and they do have specific groups for queer people of color as well. So that's a little bit more generic, but they do have mental health services specifically. I haven't used them, but I do know people who have and they're also like have sliding scale options as well. And then University of Berkeley um, has a lot of student groups on campus, and many of them are also open to general community members. I was part of Cal Q&A, or Queer and Asian, for five semesters at Berkeley as a board member. And that's basically just a community group for queer and Asian, and that includes South Asian students on campus and also general community members. I guess this is a like QTPOC group, but the Gender Equity Center is like a building, is like a center for queer people. It's beautifully run and they host a lot of programs during the semesters, a lot of informational stuff for queer and transgender people. In the Martin Luther King Jr. building on campus, uh, we have like a queer trans people of color lounge. It's like a space that's just for us. And I think that's a great thing to have. We also have the offices for the Queer Alliance Resource Center, which is another massive queer organization on campus, run by a lot of people, and they provide information. They also provide like other resources to other groups on campus, and they also provide help sponsor meetings, uh, not meetings, um, like kind of discussions with other queer people, and like transition information for transgender people and stuff like that. So. Mm. I recently came across to one group that's called uh, Parivar, um, as a queer trans South Asian family, uh, I mean family group. Uh, they, they consider themselves as family um, and uh, they are also doing a lot of work to raise awareness. So they're also based in Bay Area. Uh, I just wanted to share that information too. My another question is what can be done so that people of the LGBTQ plus community feel comfortable reporting their abuse because sometimes our community, they are not very open to discuss LGBTQ issues. So when someone, an LGBTQ individual is suffering relationship abuse, they feel uncomfortable reaching out to their family members or community members for help. And they suffer in silence because they fear of coming out. And we need to do a lot to change our community, to educate our community. So I have one question for you, that how can we make uh, our community where LGBTQ people will not face any discrimination and they will feel comfortable reporting their abuse or how can we raise awareness so that people can be more open to this community? A lot of people I know, a lot of their trauma comes from rifts in their relationships with their parents. Your relationship with your parents is so important to just your general well-being and your, their like path of your life. So I think a lot of work needs to be done by the parents. And I know that when I came out to my parents, there was a quick moment of like, whoa, okay, that will take a moment to sink in, but I like still love you, I will still learn, I will be here to support you. Um, and just, I think, like, we acknowledge, usually, like, the children acknowledge that this is a lot of, this is, like, a kind of a big bombshell to, like, drop on your parents or whatever, and that it takes a little bit for that to sink in. However, it's so important for the parents to just be there and keep learning and keep supporting and, and figuring out how to do better, be who they need to be for their kids. And that, that's just like work that adults need to do, that parents need to do and hold each other accountable to do. And that will save so much like heartache and trauma in the queer community if it starts from there. That's just my first thought. Yeah, I want to second what Sachi said. Um, those were all really great suggestions. I think for parents specifically, I think that it's really important for parents to also educate themselves. I know when I came out, I had to do a lot of work in educating my parents, you know, even though they've like lived in the US for so long, and they kind of know about queer issues, and they have queer friends, it's different when your own kid is queer. And it's, it's different from just having a queer friend. And even though I was more than happy to do a lot of the work of educating my parents, I also want to say that I think it's important for parents to look stuff up online and 
do as much as they can to educate themselves. I mean, a lot of queer people learn about themselves through the internet. And now that's like made more accessible to parents as well. And I think that it's also, it's okay to also be uncomfortable or kind of still unsure about this idea. Um, I think like your quit kid coming out as queer can be a really big thing for some people. And I think that it's important for people to, I guess, like honor their own feelings and their own discomfort, but also take steps to work through it instead of just dumping that all on their children. I think parents definitely need to have that initiative to educate themselves. And however that happens, that's what needs to happen. Any last thoughts, any tips uh, you want to share for our community members? I mean, this is a great first step. I'm glad that my three is creating the space for this conversation to happen. And I'm hopeful that people listening, especially parents listening, will have some good points to take away. And yeah, just I'm thankful for this visibility right now. Thank you. I think just general education. And I think also if there's a family with like multiple kids and like, you know, one of them's queer, I think definitely if like siblings also with like privilege too and being straight and cisgender and everything should definitely try to fight for their siblings to also take part of that labor to educate the parents and community members about what you know what lgbtq means and what uh, you know what queerness means and i think also one important thing i wanted to mention is i think connecting it to the culture is a very important putting it in the context of history cultural history so then they don't think it's as Arn said before they don't think it's a white thing because it's not actually foreign it's just hidden under years and years of it trying to be erased so I think pulling out those concrete examples from the past maybe from like cultural mythologies and stuff like that to be like hey you know what it's actually here like it's actually here they just didn't teach you about it because they didn't want you to know so when you're able to make that connection, because queer things can be very abstracted, and sometimes that doesn't help when, you know, there are people who, you know, like parents who are uneducated because that history has been almost taken away. So I think re-educating it back and making mm-hmm. it very through those cultural things is what is a, is a way that you can kind of very concretely talk about it and make it more relatable and then at the same time you can you know we can talk about how to accept like you're a queer kid i think that's the first thing that's the first thing and then after that it's the cultural connection like where queerness fits in where being transgender fits in and stuff like that thank you sachi ravina and Aurine, for this wonderful discussion Thank you for sharing your experience and knowledge with us. Uh, I'm sure we will do more shows on this topic uh, to keep our conversation alive. Uh, I hope today's discussion will help many of us to recognize our own biases and also it will motivate us to take part in creating a supportive, respectful and inclusive environment around us where all genders can feel safe, respected and happy. I'm your host, Nandini Ray, thanking you all for staying with us. Keep listening to the Maitri Podcast Between Friends. Find all our episodes on SoundCloud, Apple, Spotify, and other podcast apps. This show is for you, for our community members, and we need your support. Please like, share, and comment on our shows. We shall meet again. Till then, stay safe and stay healthy. Bye for now. Views expressed by guests of the radio show are individual opinions and not endorsed by Maidri.